Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Ren Arb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, where you can find them on Kickstarter and other places like that, all sorts of fun stuff, and uh, so let me start off with um, some YouTube comments that I have recently got. On my last video, Comic Uno said, thank you so much for the support. That is in reference to uh, my mentioning uh, the dancer. Kickstarter and uh, backing the Dancer Kickstarter. So I will talk more on that when I get to the Kickstarter campaign corner. Oh wait, sorry, I mispronounced that. The campaign corner section of my uh, YouTube show. Anyway, so yeah. And uh, George O'Connor says, uh, George from Toddler Apocalypse here. Thank you so much. And yeah, I can't wait to see this pin in real life. The mock-up looks fantastic. That's in reference to a an alien head pin that comes with the Kickstarter of Toddler Apocalypse. And I will also mention that more when I get to the campaign corner of my show. So, um, let's see here. First I, off, I would like to say, uh, check out this shirt. This shirt right here is a, uh, it's a Starry Night version of uh, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. The reason I'm wearing this shirt today is... Uh, February 5th is the 69th anniversary of the Peter Pan from Disney. And uh, as you know, I'm a big, I'm a huge uh, Peter Pan fan, and uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm actually going to have to watch it myself one of these times uh, in the next hour or so. So uh, check that out. And as you know, um, I do have a Peter Pan the Vampire comic book that you can read for free on IndiePlanet.com. Check that one out. I will be show throwing the uh, links to that up on my Twitter page under this uh, YouTube video. So check out Peter Pan the Vampire on uh, IndiePlanet.com. Made by me, drawn by me, written by me, all that fun stuff by me. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Peter Pan the movie from Disney is now 69 years old. Holy cow, that's crazy, huh? And, let's see here, so yeah, my comics are on IndiePlanet.com, IndiePlanet.com is an awesome place, there's tons of uh, independent comics on there, and uh, that means they are printed through Kablam Printing, Kablam Printing is awesome, they have uh, treated me very well with uh, the quality I get, and the uh, comics, and their system where if you wear their Kablam shirt at a convention, you uh, get $10 off of your next purchase. So that's cool. Check them out. Now, uh, on to review sides. And uh, I have some good ones up for you this week. Um, this one came with a sticker, so I will show you that first. Check out that sticker right here. Super Best Friend. It is super uh, shiny. Hollow foiled, all that fun stuff. That will be going on the box that I keep Super Best Friend in. And uh, so, let me show you the comic I'm talking about right now. Super Best Friend number one. It is awesome. I had a really fun read going through this one. Um, Super Best Friend issue one is written by Jason Inman. Inks and colors by George Cambadias. Taylor Esposito, Taylor Esposito does letters and issue design. Brittany Matter is the editor. Carlos M. Mangul is the logo creator. And uh, that's it. So uh, I first got wind of this one through the podcast Geek History Lesson, which I uh, listen to and follow. Geek History Lesson uh, show host Jason Inman is the writer of Super Best Friend, and so, yeah, I checked it out. First thing I had to, that I noticed about this is, man, I really love the art style here. So this art style uh, from George Cambadias is awesome. I love it. Um, the premise of this story is uh, there's a kid named Matthew, and he runs around um, live streaming everything that his favorite superhero Captain Terrific does and uh, one of these one of the days uh, it's actually Matthew's birthday and uh, Captain Terrific has a present for him 
And, uh, yeah, so he gives him a present, and it's uh, the Wizard of Oz, or, uh, first edition or something. And uh, in, in the uh, inside cover, it says Property Of, and it has Captain Terrific's real identity. And the kid accidentally says this unbeknownst to him, uh, his phone is still live streaming all of this. And uh, so it gets out, Captain Terrific's identity gets out to the wrong people. It gets out to, uh, let's see. I can't remember the, oh man, I thought I wrote it down on my notes. Anyway, um, so yeah, one day Matthew accidentally leaves his stream dur on during a private con conversation, gets his ID out, and trying to deal with the fallout makes this book a hit. Uh, so there, there is a lot of crazy cool stuff going on with this story. Um, he, he even he talks about all the ways that he can uh, try and uh, fix this, and one of his ideas is to uh, contact the cosmic being, Lord uh, El Exerber. It's basically like the Doctor Strange kind of stuff. He uses dark magic and uh, all that fun stuff to... Uh, anyway, basically it made me think of the Spider-Man and uh, how Spider-Man wanted to hide his identity using Doctor Strange, all that fun stuff. So it was really cool. Nod. And obviously this was written way before uh, the Spider-Man movie came out, so that that makes it another cool thing. I mean, you know, great minds think alike, all that fun stuff. So yeah, this is uh, this is kind of, he's kind of like the Clark Kent character. He uh, he lives in a small town on a farm and all that, and his, so he he goes home and visits his uh, parents, trying to smooth it over. There's a lot of cool stuff. I love it, and uh, yeah, and then the uh, the bad guy. Gosh, dang it, why didn't I write down his name? The bad guy shows up and uh, wants to take over there. Anyway, um, yeah, let's see here. No, no, I don't. And then the, uh, the Justice League version of this world show up too to help uh, Captain Terrific fight this bad guy. It's really cool and... Uh, Oh, man. Anyway, um, before I wander off too much, uh, lose track of my mind, train of thought and all that, uh, I wanted to really say that the Lady Samurai is also a uh, hero that works alongside Captain Terrific in this, and I have my assumptions of who uh, Lady Samurai is, and uh, it's really cool the way that storyline is going. Instead of your Lois Lane always being in trouble, uh, it's possible that the Lois Lane of this world is actually a hero also, so that's cool. And, uh, yeah. Uh, the Kickstarter is going right now for Super Best Friend number two, so I am on board on that one already, and uh, a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, let's see, uh, you, if you have not read uh, Jupiter Jet, any of the comics from Jupiter Jet, you could add that to your tiers on uh, Super Best Friend, and uh, yeah. So Super Best Friend was an awesome read, I love it, super glossy pages, I love the... Uh, the quality of this book, everything is good, and uh, loving it so far. The sticker is awesome. I can't wait to stick that on the box that uh, that my super best friend is going to go in. And uh, yeah, there was no thank you pages in these. Um, that's not how they roll, I guess. But I am excited to do to read more. And uh, by the end of the issue, the live streamer actually gets sucked into his phone. So that's crazy. Can't wait to. Uh, see the next issue. A lot of nods to uh, the death of Superman and the coming back of the red and blue electric Superman to this and so that is what it looks like we will have in store for us next issue. So check out Super Best Friend. I will talk more about that in the campaign corner when I uh, get to the section there and talk about uh, the campaigns that are currently running. Next up is a comic called Berserkers Solo Island. This is a poster that came with it. It's huge. I love it. It's going up on my wall of posters pretty soon because this is a series that I'm really loving. Really getting some serious uh, Dean Koontz kind of vibes from Berserker Solo Island. And uh, and I, I've been a lifelong reader of Dean Koontz since I was seven. Which obviously Dean Koontz was inspired by uh, 
oh man, Lovecraft, but uh, I never got into Lovecraft because, I don't know, just never did. So, Berserkers, Solo Island, three of eight is what this is, is written by Bill Hawk and D.W. Kwan, Khan, and art by Daniel Segulia, colorist Daniel Segulia, Walter Perea, and Damon, Damien Penalba. Uh, sorry about my pronunciation on those. I'm not very good with uh, bilingual names. Lettered by Joel Saavedra. Saavedra. Joel Saavedra. Okay. Script super supervisor Francisco Tomat. And cover artist on this is Corleen Kruger. Editor in chief is D.W. Kahn. So this is from Dark Side Media. Love everything that they they've been doing. Uh, eight, uh, Lovecraft PI and um, Zadar, the Savage, which I will talk about that in a minute. So yeah, Berserkers three of eight was an awesome read. I love the art style. So you got these poor guys. Um, Jake's and Alex are stuck in a. Uh, a mine like um, a bootlegger tunnel with tracks and everything and uh, because they were excavating a dig site that had uh, a bunch of bones in it that the military found and so they're investigating this anyway while they were investigating it they fell into a sinkhole into this mine with tracks and they ended up at the end of the tracks and found a uh, a trap door uh, swinging door in roof hatch kind of door in the uh, top of the mine and so as they were going out they accidentally lit a bunch of fuses that started some dynamite and uh, they couldn't do anything about the fuses because there was too many uh, strings of fuse to put out and they come up in a church during a town meeting and so they yell at everybody get out get out we got to get out and before uh, they could even get everybody out the doors the church goes up explodes and uh, yeah, but that's not the worst part. You know, a church blowing up, that is pretty bad. But the worst part is in this bootlegger mine, they found a whole bunch of uh, vats filled with the white powder and a bunch of bat parts. And uh, who knows what these bootleggers were doing with that. They certainly weren't making moonshine or anything. But, uh, yes, something tells me a bunch of bat parts and all that. It's oddly familiar and characteristic of uh, covid and uh, so this dust from all these uh, vats of powder and bat parts go flying up into the air along with the explosion of the church. And now the entire town is uh, shrouded in a cloud of this white dust. And uh, suddenly, as they get all these uh, victims of the explosion to triage and the local doctor and uh, everything, there are everybody that was near the explosion has a red rash going on and they start going berserker and uh, going crazy pounding on each other and that's where the issue ends it's like right when is it like suddenly starts up and grabs you and then it's over oh man so yeah book three of eight man this is gonna be a good series when it's over and uh, yeah very reminiscent of uh, Dean Koontz or uh, John Lehman uh, there seems like it it seems like it reminds me a lot of a uh, a Black Rain story by John Lehman, which I read a while ago, and uh, really good stuff. And Berserkers also has a Kickstarter going on, which I will bring up in the Kickstarter corner coming up. So Berserkers Solo Island, three of eight. It was a great read. I highly recommend you uh, back the Kickstarter, get the catch up tier if you are not familiar with Berserkers, because you could get issues one, two, and three, and then the current one, four, and I. Uh, yeah, it would be worth it. Seriously worth it. Uh, the next up on my um, review reads is one that, uh, sadly, the Kickstarter actually ended a while ago. So you missed that boat. I'm sorry. I, I've been really busy. Wasn't able to get to it and uh, help uh, push it along on its Kickstarter. But it did fine. It, it, it funded at 100 and something percent. So it did great. And what I'm talking about is this land. I'm actually reviewing this land 
uh, two and three, I think, here. And uh, this land is, it's uh, written by, in the perspective of Maori ancient, um, of uh, Maori demigods and all that fun stuff, you know, like Maui and Pele and, well, Taka, I think, is what the Maoris call Pele. And uh, all that, yeah. So this is Moa. This is a shiny card that came with it. That's cool. Uh, that'll have to go into my card collection. So this land, issue two here, is writ where... Oh, shoot, that's not the credits page. All right. Sorry. Whoa. High quality production here. Oh, here we go. The credits are on the back page. All right. So this land is written by Mark Abnett. And it is drawn by P.R. Dedelis. With, from, also from uh, Lazel Buenaventura and Hassan Osteman. Elhau is uh, the letter. Hassan, uh, I'm familiar with his name a lot. I see him letter a lot of comics that I've backed. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, this land, sorry about the pronunci pronunciations. Wow, I can't even pronounce that. Of your names there. But uh, yeah, you guys do an awesome book. I'm loving this land. Uh, and this land, issue two here. Let's see, where's my notes? Lost them. Nope, that's Berserkers. So this land, uh, in a world reborn with the powers of the ancient Maori gods, Helna must guide Tane in search of the demigod Maui. And uh, yeah, so they're 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 making their way across the across the land and uh, trying to get Ma to Maui and find uh, find a way to s free all these people that got frozen in stone. They're basically uh, trapped in lava. So yeah, good stuff. Can't wait to uh, see where that story's going. Loving all the uh, Ma all the Maori gods, Polynesian cultural and stuff. Really cool stuff, and uh, yeah, as they get there, they find they make their way to this underground realm of people that uh, that are, are gathering knowledge and saving it for the next generation. But something is going crazy here, where uh, they have a trapped cousin of Helna here, and uh, they're treating her poorly, using her to make uh, metals and lo basically lava to trap a gigantic dragon. So this is uh, this land issue three. Uh, all hell breaks loose when this dragon gets out and uh, Moa gives one of, his, one of his partners here the extra power and uh, he ends up turning into a giant rooster. And so the giant rooster is fighting the dragon very weird kaiju kind of battle going on underground here. Ends up destroying the entire underground city. And uh, yeah, really good story. I loved it. And uh, I did back the next issue, so I will be getting more. I will be getting more uh, This Land coming up soon. Sorry I didn't, wasn't able to push the Kickstarter, but yeah, time is what it is, and uh, yeah, things happen. So, now I'm off to the section I call Mailbox. Mailbox, mailbox, what's in Rentnarb's mailbox? Yeah! I got some really fun stuff in the mailbox lately, and uh, one is <clears throat> I found this book called uh, Kickstarter for the Independent Creator. So, yeah, I don't know... I, as slow as I am at making my comics, I don't know when I'll be doing my own Kickstarter, but this is nice information to get. This is from M. Holly Rosing, who uh, makes the, does the Kickstarter comic um, Boston Metaphysical Society, which I have yet to back yet, but eventually one of these days I will back it. But I will have, if I ever do back it, I will have to get the ketchup here 
and get all the books because, yeah. But I've had my eye on that one for a while. It's always intrigued me, but I just can never do it when it comes around. Maybe next time. We'll see. Or maybe I'll just find them on their Etsy and get all their stuff, and that way I'll be caught up before their Kickstarter. I, I did hear that they were going to be doing a Kickstarter in April, so I better make a decision, find out what I'm going to do. But this is a good book to help me out, and uh, yeah. Can't wait to dive into that one. Next up that I got in the mail is Zadar the Savage. That's from the creator of Berserker Solo Island. So I can't wait. Um, so they wanted to do a Tarzan book. And uh, basically, I, I think they didn't get permission to do it. And so they made they changed the names of all their characters, Zadar and Jane and Tarzan, Jane, all that fun stuff, to Zadar. Basically, they were able to do the same story. It, it'll work out, and I can't wait to read that. That'll be going in by, into my read pile. Good stuff. And next up in my read pot in my mailbox is a book called Leap M. This is some cool stuff, time travel stuff. Based on the cover, you would think it's black and white, but nope, on the inside it is colored. So, but that is one crazy awesome cover. Love it. Can't wait to read that. It'll be going in the read pile, my monstrous read pile. And uh, here's one that I was I missed on the Kickstarter. Death Sentence. Oh, is it going to focus? It looks a little blurry on my end. Anyway, Death Sentence. I missed the Kickstarter. This is a hardback, and I was able to find a used copy on Amazon. So I will be throwing that into the read pile also. And uh, yeah, there it is. That's nice and clear, right? So Death Sentence, I've got this one now. I had Volume 2 show up um, a month or so ago. So yeah, can't wait to read that. Found this one on Amazon in the used. You, you, you're able to get the used on that when you click on Amazon. So yeah, awesome. Now we are on to uh, campaign corner. Oh, I don't have my sign, so I can't hold it up and sing a stupid song. Anyway, let's just get right into what's on Kickstarter right now. There is a crazy amount. If you're following me on. Uh, Twitter, you've no, probably noticed uh, my name pops up of, hey, I back this and I back this and I back this. There's been a lot of stuff I back in lately. So much good stuff on Kickstarter. So, first up is the Crude Knight Collected Edition. And it says, King Arthur plus Mad Max and a dash of There Will Be Blood in Crude Knight. It, was, it looked so awesome. Uh, the preview I read was really cool. I mean, even throw in a little bit of Cobra Kai in there, because from what I read in the preview pages, that's what I saw anyway. So after reading those preview pages, I had to jump in and back this one. The Crude Knight has 110 pages in it. It's awesome. Currently at 184% funded, so if you back it, you will be getting it. It's from Plastic Sword Press, uh, and I've backed practice Sword Press stuff before. Um, super... Scouts and uh, Axeman. So I'm excited to see what uh, Crude Knight Collected Edition is, and I can't wait to get it. Next up on my list is Miskatonic High Volume 2. This has 200 plus pages. It is the Volume 2 is called River of Blood. It's collecting issues 7 to 13 of Miskatonic High, the acclaimed tongue in cheek. Lovecraftian horror series along with extras. Uh, yeah, as you, if you've been following me for a while, you know I love Miskatonic High so much. Uh, it's an Archie-esque kind of Riverdale storyline of these kids in high school, and each of these kids has their own mystic um, Lovecraftian problem going on, and and I'm loving this story. I love these kids and. And uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff in e each issue, uh, the teacher's lounge, as they call it, always gives me an, a smile when I read that stuff. I love uh, hearing about how these stories came about. So, yeah, and I'll, on the extras, you could always add Lovecraft P.I. to your tier. Find out what that's all about, because Miss Katonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. 
Check it out. Extras include stickers, which I am getting in my, I have it on my add-on. And uh, keychains, buttons, metal bookmarks. Lots of cool stuff. So check out Miskatonic High Volume 2, River of Blood, 200 pages of awesomeness on Kickstarter right now. It is currently 9,700% funded. That ends on 8, February 10th. Breeding Pulp, I Eat Monsters Horror Comics is on Kickstarter right now. A woman's battle against demonic forces of evil responsible for killing her brothers and giving her supernatural abilities. It is by Justin V. Gray and uh, the creator of Standstill. And it is 56 pages of awesomeness. Uh, it looks great. And uh, it's basically what it sounds like. It's a woman who goes around and she hunts monsters, she kills them and eats them. Cooks them in stews, all sorts of fun stuff. It is currently at 120% funded. So if you jump on there, you will definitely be getting it. Breeding, bleeding Pulp, number one, I Eat Monsters, is on Kickstarter right now till February 10th. Check that one out. Berserkers, Solo Island, 4 of 8, is on Kickstarter right now. That is one of the books I just reviewed. And it is the comic about a deadly pathogen is released on a small island, causing the locals to go berserk. It is set in the 1950s. It looks so awesome. I love this story. And it is 833% funded right now. So check it out. Berserker Solo Island 4 of 8 on Kickstarter right now till February 11th. And there's always tiers where you can get the catch up. So don't feel like you uh, are, it's too weird jumping in on issue 4. Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll. The Spades Volume 1 is on Kickstarter right now. Make 100, limited edition. Uh, Spades is the main character from the Sex Spies and Rock and Roll anthology that I just recently read and reviewed. So uh, I'm not even sure how many pages it'll be because they keep announcing um, that when they hit stretch goals that they're adding more pages. More pages. It started at 22, but it might even be over 40 60 pages by now, who knows. It is 75% funded right now though. So if you are interested in Sex Spies and Rock and Roll, you jump on that really fast, help it out because it ends on February 13th. It needs your help, 25% more to go. Mechaton 1 and 2 is on Kickstarter right now. I'm, I'm new to this one, so I've got the catch up tier myself, getting issues 1 and 2 of Mechaton. A rule of comic book. Wait, okay. A rule of com cool comics with mech and kaiju. Anyway, I don't know what I. I wrote my notes weird on that one. Anyway, it is about mechs, and it is about a special glove that uh, whatever you touch, it makes you a mech suit out of that. So if you touch in a cab, or an alarm clock, or a hot dog stand, whatever, it turns that into a mech suit. And then you go and fight these big, huge kaijus with it. So a slacker and an artist discover an alien glove that turns anything they touch into a pilotable mech. It's really cool. Um, the art looks really awesome. Very similar to uh, the Super Scouts that I back talked about. Um, it is at 115% funded right now and ends on February 16th. Check out Mechaton 1 and 2 on Kickstarter. Toddler Apocalypse is on Kickstarter right now. 64 pages of anthology about the hardest part of surviving an apocalypse, having kids. There's, as I mentioned, there is an awesome pin in there of one of the aliens' heads. And I can't wait to see this book, but unfortunately, this is only 76% funded. So unless you guys jump in there, get that extra 24% up there, I'm not going to be able to see this book. And I really want to see this book, so check out Toddler Apocalypse, get on there, get the pin, and uh, get the comic, help out a bunch of, there are a lot of creators on this anthology. So check out Toddler Apocalypse on Kickstarter until February 18th. Vampire Bloodlines is on Kickstarter right now with issue 4. 24 pages of manga-sized comics. That means it's going to be about the size of this piece of paper I'm holding. 
And uh, yeah, so far I'm loving the story. Four issues in and it is really cooking up. The art keeps getting better with every issue. That's one thing I love about it is it just keeps getting better. And uh, the story will be about the aftermath of a failed assassination attack from issue three. And it comes with cosplay covers and uh, there's even an option to get a magazine that collects all the cosplay covers together. It is currently 300% funded. So check out Vampire Bloodlines issue 4 on Kickstarter till February 20th. Thistleheart, one of the three, called the Three Realms, Ravens? No. Okay, start over. Thistleheart, one is on Kickstarter right now, subtitled The Three Ravens. It is a dark fantasy comic featuring a seductive witch, ebon blades, and magic potions, and a terrifying monster with a human soul. And uh, you, usually I don't go for this magic stuff in Weird Realms, but this is from a writer that I have enjoyed, um, John Schlimm, and uh, he does the Goth Ghost Girl. So really cool stuff. And I know I'm going to get the book because it's already 316% funded. So check out Thistle Heart 1 on Kickstarter right now until February 21st. The Dancer 1 and 2 is on Kickstarter right now. The Dancer is actually on the last episode I reviewed book 1. It was a good book. It's basically my impression of it was uh, what if Punisher was a ballet dancer. And so it, was, it sounded really cool and it was really cool. The art was amazing. So, a dancer, assassin, a dancer assassin is forced to deal with her childhood trauma of witnessing her parents' murder. 22 pages, Mia must face the fact that she has become the villain in her own story. So yeah, the cliffhanger that it left with on uh, issue 1 just blew me away. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what? can't wait to get that next issue. So check it out, 22 pages of awesomeness. There is a Kaylin Smith cover. Kaylin Smith does the, um, uh, for goodness sakes, series that I crazy love. So check that one out. Awesome stuff. It is currently 146% funded, so you will definitely get your book if you uh, kickstart this one. Check out The Dancer 1 and 2 on Kickstarter right now till February 24th. Adept 2 is on Kickstarter right now. It is the return of this epic Shaolin series. Amy deals with the fallout after the mysterious attack on international pop star Sasha True. So they were at a concert, her and her sister watching Sasha True, and uh, a bunch of uh, terrorists come in and kidnap their, kidnapped her. And Amy, using some Shaolin uh, Kung Fu that she learned in dreams, uh, goes about and rescues this singer, Sasha True. It was awesome, and yeah, she, so she's got to get to the bottom of how did she learn, how did, all these training dreams she had turned out to be real, how did she learn how Kung Fu, all this fun stuff. 44 pages of awesomeness. I can't wait to see it. The art is amazing. The spot gloss covers are awesome. 159% funded, and it Adept 2 ends on February 24th. Alicia Carter is a new one I started I backed this to just this morning while I was doing my notes. It is an action a minute pulp sci-fi series about a girl and a robot robot. Full color, 28 pages of comic. The preview pages are what sold me. Uh, so yeah, I love that uh, so it's Alicia Carter makes me think of John Carter. Maybe there's a connection. We'll have to see. Uh, I hope so, because that would be really cool in my eyes. Anyway, the preview pages are what got me. After reading those, I backed the book. The art style is awesome. There is a multitude of alternate covers. And, uh, yeah, it is currently 165% funded as of right now. Alicia Carter is on Kickstarter until February 27th. Vampire Detective in Space number one is on Kickstarter right now. From the creator of uh, Unicorn Vampire Hunter, a detective story about a vampire living in space with his snarky AI companion. Solves crimes and 
the cops can't, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. Anyway, basically, the vibes I was getting is, this is Spider-Man 2099. He's got an AI, kind of like Layla, that uh, floats around with him, and uh, yeah, so... Uh, this is, it's a vampire story for one, and I am a sucker for vampire stories. The, I'm getting a sticker bundle that has a whole bunch of, uh, True Blood-like looking stuff, uh, bottles of Mountain Dew kind of blood that vampires drink. Ooh, anyway, Vampire Detective in Space Number 1 is only at 62%. So, we're halfway there. We really need you to jump on this one. Check out Vampire Detective in Space. It ends on February 28th, and it really needs some help making it above that 100%, so let's get on that one. Loot number two is on Kickstarter right now, and uh, that's actually next in my read pile, so I can't wait to read loot number one. Loot number two is a Scout comic drawn by Kaylin Smith, so the artist and creator of uh, For Goodness Sake. So that's one reason I jumped in on that one. Emily Jackson continues her search for the lost treasure of Montezuma. And there are also other tiers where you can add on uh, Unicorn, and the Source, and the Mall. And I have some issues of the Mall in my read pile as well, so I will have to pull those out and check what, out that. I even have some Source in my read pile. Um, so yeah. Loot 2 on Kickstarter right now, 56% funded, so it's a little above half. It needs some help, but it just barely started. So not too bad, 50% funded in one day or so. And uh, yeah, I did the tier where I added on Unicorn, because uh, that story interested me as well. So check out Loot 2 on Kickstarter. A lot of add-ons you can do. A lot of cool stuff going on with that. A lot of, a lot of cool comics coming out right now. Super Best Friend 1 and 2. Oh man, yeah. So yes, Super Best Friend 1 and 2 is on Kickstarter right now. A superhero adventure comic, the live streamer sidekick of the world's greatest superhero, must protect his best friend's secret identity. 44 pages of awesomeness. Oh my gosh, that's a big comic. Rad preview pages, and I just read a really good story uh, issue of it, so I can't wait to see that. And, uh... Based on my love for this comic book and uh, Jupiter Jet, I went onto Amazon and found me a used copy of Science from the same creator, Jason Inman. And so I've got Science coming to me pretty soon from Amazon, a used copy. And uh, I found a really good deal on that one, so I can't wait to read that. I think I remember hearing about Science way back in the early 2000s on the podcast uh, Seattle Geekly. So, it's one that's been piquing my interest. Really good stuff. There's a lot of good tiers. You can add uh, Jupiter Jet to uh, your tier if you need to. And I highly recommend that because those are some good comics. So, check out Super Best Friend issues 1 and 2 on Kickstarter right now. A lot of good add-ons. 136% funded. Ends on March 3rd. Prison Witch Volume 3 is coming to Kickstarter soon. And uh, so I've got Prison Witch in my read pile, pulling them out to read next week. And uh, I will let you know what I think of those next week. So check out Prison Witch Volume 3 on Kickstarter right now. This is the finale. The final volume of Prison Witch Trilogy is here. Magic and mystery combined in this thrilling graphic novel. Starside is coming to Kickstarter soon. Uh, I don't have any information on that really. Uh, I heard about it in the email, and I've already been reading Starside. I think I'm up to issue four. And uh, but as soon as Starside hits Kickstarter, I will tell you all about it. It's a story I'm loving, art style I'm loving. Uh, I originally found them on Twitter or Instagram, and uh, I have been buying their comics, kickstarting their comics ever since. Great stuff. Can't wait for more. Tart Volume Two is coming to Scout Comics soon. So, uh, next month, as soon as I know the uh, previews code, I will be sharing that with you. But you can go to Scouts Comics right now and get uh, Tart Volume 1 right, right now. It has an awesome bullseye cover. I loved it. I bought it from Scout Comics and love that series. Uh, you can go back through uh, the archives of my shows and um, 
you can find my review on that one. But trust me, I loved it. I can't wait for more. So as soon as Volume 2 comes out on Scout Comics, I am buying that boy. You can have your uh, comic shop order for you. All sorts of fun stuff. So I think that brings me to the end of the Kickstarter cam corner. And uh, yeah. So if you have a comic book that you've been making and you want me to hear about it, check it out. Check out the Kickstarter, whatever. Even if it's not on Kickstarter, if it's just on Indie Planet, um, let me know about it. Because, yeah, I, I love back in fellow uh, Indie Planet Kablam comics. And uh, I love Kickstarters, as you can tell. My read pile is insane, but I'm getting to those comics eventually. And, uh, yeah, so please tell me about your campaign. Let me know what you think, if you think I should mention it. And uh, I will check it out. I will probably even back it. Who knows? And, yeah, don't forget to, even if your uh, comic is on Indiegogo, throw me a line. I will check it out and uh, give you a mention. So, yeah. If you ever have any comments or anything on your YouTube, on my YouTube videos, uh, drop me a comment. I will uh, shout them out, answer questions, whatever. So, what have I been watching lately? Um, me and my wife have been watching uh, Peter the Great together. It's an awesome show. And of course I'm watching Peacemaker. Peacemaker is awesome. Soundtrack is awesome. Oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. We've been watching uh, the last season of uh, This Is Us. And I don't know why, but it makes me cry every episode. My wife makes fun of me for it, but what am I going to do? I'm going to cry every time. So, yeah, those are some shows I'm watching lately. I just watched a movie called The Old, or Old from M. Night Shyamalan. It was weird. And, as you may know, I am on Patreon. I, I drop these on Patreon every time. Uh, I should be making my own comics, Peter, the Pan, Peter Pan the Vampire, but uh, you know how it goes. Um, too many kids right now. If I didn't have my toddler that I had to take care of in the morning and get to school... Anyway, uh, yeah, I got to get a handle on that, get into a rhythm. My hardest part is uh, I have some AD problem, ADD problems where uh, my focus is struggling. I don't know. You probably noticed that listening to me talk. Without these notes, I would, this show would be lost. Anyway, I'm hoping to uh, be able to get back into a rhythm of that and... Uh, get you guys some uh, behind the scenes on how I make Peter Pan the Vampire soon. All that fun stuff. Anyway, that's what my Patreon should be. But currently, all it is is reviews right now. If you were to follow me on Patreon, this is what you would get. I would hold up a place card that has your name on it. I don't know if you can read that. So I'd hold up a place card. I'd say, hey, Gary Brandner, th thanks for backing me on Patreon. This is where you can find Gary Brandner on Twitter and Facebook. So go ahead and check out Gary Bratner. That would be me. But if it was you backing me, that's what I would do right now, is I would be throwing your name out there, holding up a place card with your social medias on it, all that fun stuff. So that leads, brings me to the end of my show. Yep, those are my Kickstarter notes. I will save those till next week. And uh, yeah, I've got some good stuff in my read pile for next week. Um, I'm going to be reading Prison Witch Volume 1 and 2. I have Loot, Issue 1 to read. Uh, Star Side's coming up, which that'll coincide when that uh, issue hits the uh, Kickstarters. All, all sorts of fun stuff. Man, I got so much good stuff to read. And uh, But yeah, if your Kickstarter's coming up and I have the comic, I will pull it out of my read pile and read it right away because I like given the extra shout out, the extra boost, because I want these comics to make it. And as you heard, there are a few that are not quite 100% yet. They need some help. So make sure you go on to Twitter. Follow me for all the links of these uh, Kickstarter campaigns that I mentioned. Give them all a check out and uh, give them all a back. Even if you can just give them a little dollar for uh, no reward or digital rewards, whatever. Check them out. Help them out. Because these guys are making some good stuff, and they need help getting these things made. So that's the end of my show. Thank you for watching. Gary Brantner of Renarb Studios Comics. And uh, see you next week.